Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Pratap Naikwade and welcome to our channel PVN Science Study. In this third video of Riksha, we are going to study the structure of sporophyte, spore as well as life cycle of Riksha one by one. So this is the figure of vertical section of the thallus showing the major sporophyte of Riksha. In the last lecture, we have seen that after fertilization, zygote was formed. Zygote is the first cell of the diploid or the sporophytic generation. The mature sporophyte of Rixia is the simplest amongst the sporophyte of the other genera of Bryophyta. So the sporophyte of Rixia only contains capsule and here the foot as well as the seta is absent. This capsule is also known as the spore sac. Dear friends, as you can see here, this sporophyte is embedded in the storage region of the gametophyte. This is mature sporophyte, but the end sporophyte is enclosed in the single layered winter. But as it matures, the cells of the wall divide vertically to form two layered wall called calepra. The zygote divides mitotically to form sporogonium having a single sterile layer or jacket layer enclosing sporogenous cells. The sporogenous cells divides and redivides mitotically to increase in number of cell and the large generation of the cells is known as the spore mother cells or the sporocytes. The spore mother cells as the name itself indicate they are giving birth to the spores. The spore mother cells are diploid but the haploid cells are produced after meiosis by the spore mother cells. During the meiotic division, the disintegration of the jacket wall and the inner layer of the calepra takes place. A few diploid cells do not undergo meiosis but degenerate to form nutritive cells they are called as nerve cells. So these are the spores which lie in the cavity of the capsule surrounded by outer layer of the calepra. So this is the single layered calepra as you can see here. The sporophyte of Rixia does not have chloroplast and it does not have the absorptive organ like the rhizoids. Hence, the sporophyte of Rixia is completely dependent for the nutrition on the gametophyte. Hence, the sporophyte of Rixia is completely parasite. The sporogonium of Rixia never decays. When the thallus and surrounding calepra decay or disintegrate, the spores remain behind the soil. The wind may disperse these spores. On the return of favorable condition, they germinate to form the new gametophyte. Dear friends, now we will study the structure of Rixia spore. So, as you can see here, the liberated spore is tetrahedral. The spore wall or sporoderm is formed of two layers. The outer layer is known as exine, while the inner layer is known as intine. Exine is also known as exosporium, while the intine is also known as endosporium. The exine or the outer layer, it is variously ornamented, as you can see here. The spore wall encloses cytoplasm possessing a single haploid nucleus. The entine is thin walled. In favorable condition, this spore is going to be germinate and after germination, it is going to be developed into the new plant of Rixia. Dear friend, this is the actual photograph of the slide of Rixia where we can see the Rixia sporophyte. This is the calyptra and here we can see the spore tetrad. This is also another beautiful photograph where we can see the sporophyte of Rixia. Dear friends, now we will see the last part of Rixia that is the life cycle of Rixia. The life cycle of Rixia is also described as alternation of generation. In the life cycle of bryophyte, there are two generations. One is known as haploid gametophytic generation and the second one is diploid sporophytic generation. Gametophytic generation produces sporophytic generation through fertilization while the sporophytic generation produces gametophytic generation through another important process that is the meiosis and so therefore the life cycle of Rixia it is described as alternation of generation. We can start the study of Rixia life cycle with the Rixia gametophyte. Rixia gametophyte is prostate, it is flat, green, dorsiventral thallus with the rhizoids. The photosynthetic region of the thallus prepares organic food while the rhizoids absorb mineral salts and water from the soil. Hence, the gametophyte is the dominant, independent and the autotropic generation. Gametophytic generation is the sexual generation 
and so therefore it is going to produce the two sex organ the male sex organ it is known as anthridium and the female sex organ which is known as archegonium so both the anthridium as well as the archegonium they are denoted here as single end this single end denotes that these are haploid in nature later on archegonium is going to produce the female gamete that is egg and here inside the anthridium the male gametes are produced they are known as anthrozoite after maturity the anthrozoites they are liberated from the anthridium and they are moving towards the egg and when these anthrozoites they are uniting with the egg this process is known as the fertilization as we already described that this phenomena is known as chemotaxis because this movement is directed by the chemicals which are present in the mucilage the product of fertilization it is the oospore which is diploid in nature because this male gamete and this female gamete both are single end and after union they are forming the diploid oospore or the zygote so the anthrozoite and egg these are the last cells of the gametophyte regeneration while the zygote or the oospore is the first cell of the sporophytic generation the oospore later on develop into embryo and embryo is later on developed into the sporogonium or the sporophyte of rickshia the sporophyte of rickshia is produced within the gametophyte it consists of only capsule as both foot and seed are absent as the sporophyte does not contain the photosynthetic tissue and it also does not contain the rhizoids and so therefore the sporophytic generation it is totally dependent on the gametophytic generation for the food the sporogonium or the sporophyte of rickshia contains capsule inside the capsule spore mother cells are present the spore mother cells they are diploid in nature and so here they are denoted as 2n the spore mother cells undergo meiosis to produce the spores the spores these are haploid in nature in favorable condition the spores they are going to be germinate and after germination they are going to produce the new gametophyte of rickshia so by this way this life cycle of the rickshia it is going to be continue with the alternation of generation that is the gametophytic generation with the sporophytic generation here also we can see the graphical representation of the life cycle of rickshia dear friend with this we have completed the study of rickshia we have studied the rickshia in three different parts and this is the third part and with this we are completing the study of rickshia all the best for your study see you soon thank you